I don't read news unless it's Ground News, the sponsor of this video. Here's the usual black hole explanation. Take a star and compress it by keeping all its mass. Then the escape speed will keep increasing, right? Eventually, that escape speed will become more than the speed of light. And when that happens, nothing, not even light, can escape this star and therefore we now have a black hole. This explanation is pretty intuitive, but it has just one problem. It is wrong. <laughs> it's completely wrong. So in this video, we're gonna see why this explanation makes no sense, why in Newtonian mechanics you cannot have black holes and how to really think about them using general relativity. And in doing so, we will discover answers to fundamental questions like why are black holes black in the first place? Not because there's no light coming from this dark region, there is light coming, but there's something else happening. And we'll also understand, of course, why you can never escape a black hole, but we'll also see some other perspectives like why nothing can even enter a black hole in the first place. <laughs> so if you're ready for this, Let's begin. But before that, what happens when Musk enters a black hole? He gets elongated. So Einstein, what's wrong with this explanation? The escape speed is more than the speed of light, so nothing can escape this object, therefore it's a black hole, right? Well, Einstein says, Mahesh, if this is your explanation, then, well, rockets can easily escape these things. And I'm like, wait, what? How, how can rockets escape these? The escape velocity is more than the speed of light. And Einstein says, all right, Mahesh, time for some Newtonian mechanics 101. So we have a rocket inside of this black hole. Now, according to Newtonian mechanics, there is a force of gravity acting on him downwards towards the center of it, right? And I'm like, yeah, and that force of gravity is insanely strong. And Einstein agrees, but he says it's a finite value, right? Because you have finite mass, there's a finite amount of gravity. Now, because rockets have their own thrust, there's also a thrust force acting in the opposite direction. Now Einstein says, Mahesh, what if we make sure that the thrust force is always bigger than the force of gravity, what happens then? Uh, what happens then? Yeah, it will, it will keep accelerating. It will keep accelerating. That's right, if the thrust force is bigger than the force of gravity, it will keep accelerating forever, which means it can easily escape this black hole. What the hell? Wait a second. But Einstein, what about the escape velocity? What's going on over here? Why can rockets escape it? Well, Einstein reminds that Mahesh, this concept of escape speed only applies to projectiles that do not have their own thrust. It doesn't work with rockets and stuff. So for example, let's see what happens if you were to shoot a cannon. Cannon is a projectile because it doesn't have its own thrust. Now, just like when we throw a ball up, it slows down. As this cannon goes up, it'll slow down. Now, if this initial speed at which we shot the cannon was more than the escape speed, which I know is possible, which is impossible over here, but just to understand the idea of escape speed, if it was more than the escape speed, then it would keep going forever. It would never ever turn back. That's the meaning of escape speed. However, because in this particular case, this speed will always be less than the escape speed, it will turn back. That's all that we can understand from this idea of escape speed. So I'm like, okay, so this black hole cannot trap rockets, but it can trap projectiles, right? And I sense like, no, it doesn't even trap this projectile because remember this projectile can go very far before turning back. And as, since it goes very far, an astronaut can easily come in, grab it and take it away. <laughs> so look, according to this explanation, rockets can escape black holes, projectiles can escape black holes. You can probably argue in a similar way that even light can escape black holes, which means that is a lousy, lousy explanation, Mahesh. In contrast, from a real black hole, nothing, nothing can ever escape out of it. And the only way to un understand that is using general relativity. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, my whole life has been a lie. Then why is this explanation so popular? Why are, why are wannabe YouTubers like this spreading misinformation? And Einstein says, well, Mahesh, that's because of a mere numerical coincidence. You see, if you compress a star beyond a point where the escape speed becomes more than the speed of light, the object will indeed become a black hole. That is a fact. But the reason why it becomes a black hole, well, that has nothing to do with the fact that it becomes more than the escape speed becomes more than the speed of light. That's the coincidence. And because of that, this misconception is, is widespread. It's a lesson for us that just because something sounds intuitive doesn't necessarily mean it is true, it is accurate. You should always think a little bit critically. And if you do that, you can easily find gaps in the explanation. Also always try to find the gaps in the explanation. For example, a few days ago, I heard that we discovered twisted magnetic fields in the black hole at the center of our Milky Way. 
How true is that now? I didn't have time to do critical thinking, but fortunately what I did have is Ground News, the sponsor of this video. Ground News was founded by, you know, just a former regular NASA engineer <laughs> with a mission to provide media transparency. What I love about Ground News is that it doesn't ask me to believe in anything. Instead, it just gives me all the tools needed to do critical thinking very quickly. And that's why I use it all the time on my phone, but you can also check out the website, go to ground.news slash floated, or just scan the QR code on the screen. So when I searched for this particular story on black holes with twisted magnetic fields, I saw it was covered by more than 60 articles from all over the world. And there's also a political bias distribution showing me that most sources come from the center, but less than 10% are coming from the right, making this story a potential blind spot for those readers. Then I immediately compared a lot of these headlines and I noticed that most of them did talk about twisted magnetic fields. So that's grew my confidence in the authenticity. But wait, I don't wanna go through all these articles. So there's something more. There's also a factuality rating given to each of these sources, showing how subjective it is. It's given by independent news monitoring agencies. So I just filtered out the high factuality ones and turns out most of them are highly factual over here. I went through a few of them and now I think that this news is really, really authentic. <laughs> Media coverage plays a huge role in how people think about science, and that's why I think Ground News is important. So do check them out at ground.news slash floated or scan the QR code over here. Using this link, you'll get a 40% off unlimited access to the Vantage option, which is what I use. Not only will it give you the tools to level up your critical thinking ability for news from potentially all around the world, but you'll also be supporting a really good cause, and of course, my channel as well. So do check them out. The link is also in the description. Thanks again, Ground News, for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the video. When two black holes bumped, what did they say to each other? Nothing, they just waved. Okay, Einstein, so how do we really think about black holes? So Einstein says, let's start with an example. Imagine you throw somebody into a black hole, say Cooper from Interstellar. As he goes towards the black hole, it will accelerate. That is pretty obvious, right? But that is until he goes really close to the black hole. See, once that happens, he will actually start slowing down. And I'm like, wait, what? Why would he slow down? And Einstein says, Mahesh, remember how clocks tick slower and slower the closer you get to any planet or a star? Well, in case of the black hole, it becomes extreme. As you go closer and closer to the black hole, the clocks tick much slower and towards the edge of the black hole, the clock doesn't tick at all. The clock just stops, which means time gets frozen at the edge of the black hole. And because of this extreme time dilation, one second close to the black hole means you'll have to probably wait a million years. <laughs> and one second at the edge of the black hole, well, you'll have to wait an infinite amount of time to even see this clock tick. And therefore, since time is passing so, so slowly, everything about Cooper slows down, including his speed. And as he comes very close, you will basically see him frozen. Nothing probably ever happens. In fact, you have to wait an infinite amount of time to actually even see him reach the edge of the black hole. And I'm like, that kind of makes sense because once he enters into the black hole, light cannot escape out of it and therefore we will never be able to see him entering black hole. And Einstein is like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. I'm not talking about you seeing things. We'll come back to that, but I'm not talking about that. Einstein says, let me clarify. I'm saying, as far as we are concerned, Cooper never actually enters the black hole at all. And I'm like, wait, what? Wait, what? Why? He says, because remember, at the edge of the black hole, time doesn't tick at all. If you want him to enter, which is an event, you need time, but there is no time beyond this. And therefore there are no events beyond this. So the last event that we will ever see, even if we wait for an infinite amount of time, the last event would be him just reaching the edge of the black hole. There are no more events beyond that. Which means, as far as we are concerned, even if you wait for an infinite amount of time, from our perspective, Cooper never enters the black hole. And since there are no events happening beyond this particular region, well, you probably know this region, the edge of the black hole is what we call an event horizon. So think about it, if you did enter into the black hole, then by definition, there was an event beyond the event horizon, that can't be true. This is the last event. What you're seeing on this is the last event that you will ever happen in our timeline. So guess what? All the stuff that you've thrown at the black hole because you've hated them, they're just lurking around over there. Even they will never, ever enter into the black hole. 
And I find this to be so incredibly weird because most of the time when we think about black holes, we are talking about escaping from it. But for the first time, we're now seeing that nothing can ever enter a black hole because of the event horizon. This is so weird. And Einstein says, yes. So next time when someone asks you why you cannot escape from a black hole, you now have an answer because nothing ever enters into the black hole in the first place. But remember, this is relativity, so there is another perspective which we'll get to. But before that, now let's answer the question, why are black holes black? Not because light is trapped inside of it. Remember, nothing ever enters into the black hole, so if this person, everything is giving out light and that light is reaching us. But the reason we can't see it is because of the time dilation. See, if, if you try to shine light and say, let's say the frequency says that two waves are one second apart. So you're giving two waves per second just to take simple numbers over here, okay? Then when that same light reaches us, remember one second over here could mean like thousands of years over here. So that same two waves will be thousand years apart for us. In other words, look at the frequency. Two waves per second has become two waves per thousand years. The frequency has reduced dramatically. We call this redshift. And the redshift over here is insane. An almost infinite redshift is happening over here. Because of this, the frequency is undetectably low. That's the reason why we cannot see anything. So whatever light is coming, is shining from here, well, all the light is coming us, coming towards us because remember, none of that light ever entered the black hole because nothing ever enters into a black hole ever from our perspective. So that light, light does make a, does reach us, but because the frequency of that light is almost undetectably low, that's why we cannot see anything which is close to the black hole. And that's the reason why we cannot, this region is dark. Insane, isn't it? But that still doesn't answer my question, Einstein. Why people talk about escaping a black hole if I can never enter a black hole? And Einstein says, oh no, Mahesh, you can always enter a black hole. It's just that from your perspective, nothing else can ever enter the black hole. Like, what? What are you talking about? A black hole insults a light beam, but the light beam doesn't reply anything. Why? Because it had no comeback. Well, Mahesh, so far we've been looking at things from a perspective of a person far away, but now let's think about it from the perspective of the following person itself. Let's think about it from Cooper's perspective. So as Cooper approaches the event horizon, what will he experience? Will his time freeze? Would he stay there forever? Never living? Never dying? Actually, nothing of that sort. Remember, in general relativity, uh, gravity is not a force at all. And therefore, Cooper is actually inertial. There is no force acting on him. He's just floating in space. And his clock is ticking normally from his own perspective. Remember, in, even though time dilation happens, you never see your clock ticking slowly. Remember that part, okay? So your, talk, your clock always ticks normally. Similarly, Cooper's clock is ticking normally. And if this black hole is big enough, like it's, you know, it's like a super massive black hole, then the space time is pretty much flat, even if you are you know, even close to the event horizon, which means as he enters, as the, from his perspective, the black hole comes close to it, he will feel nothing. Nothing really happens to his clock. Nothing ever, anything happens. And therefore, he will easily enter into a black hole. So from his perspective, that event happens. And so you can now see truly how freaky things are. From the outside perspective, this event of Cooper entering into the black hole never happens. But from Cooper's own perspective, that event does happen. But wait, it has to be one of them. Cooper either enters a black hole or he never enters the black hole. Which one is it? Linesen says, that's the beauty of event horizon. <laughs> you have two perspectives. From the outside perspective, that cannot happen. Nothing ever enters a black hole for, from Cooper's own perspective. From the perspective of the people who are falling, that does happen. They do enter the black hole. So now, why can't Cooper escape the black hole? What is stopping him from just turning around and just firing his rockets? Because remember, gravity is not a force. There is nothing pulling him down, so why can't he escape? Lyson says, now that's a great question. Here's a way to think about it. Let's see what happens if he actually escapes and comes out, what logical contradictions it will have. And from that, we will be able to argue why he shouldn't be able to escape, okay? So again, let's go back to our external perspective. Remember from the external perspective, nothing ever enters a black hole. 
Well, now imagine Cooper just escaped. <laughs> what does that mean? Will we have two copies of him? How do we make sense of this? See, first of all, this cannot make sense because this event of him escaping a black hole is an event that happens after Cooper enters a black hole. But as we've already seen, that event is impossible because the last event we'll ever see is of Cooper reaching the edge of the black hole. So by definition, this event cannot happen. So it's a logical contradiction and therefore this can never happen. Therefore, Cooper can never escape from a black hole unless he could time travel. There's one way to reconcile all of this. Because this Cooper is older than this Cooper, we could say that this person has come back into the past. He is from the future. So in other words, coming out of the event horizon is equivalent of that person traveling back into the past. And so now we can see, a, now we can get a better understanding of why once you enter a black hole, you cannot escape. Here's, here's the reason why, see. If you are close to a black hole, but outside of it, then the center of the black hole represents a space in front of you and the rest of the universe represents a space behind you and you have complete freedom on where you want to go. You want to just free fall over there or you can turn around, blast your rockets and go back. That's how space works. You have complete access to where you want to go on in space. But things change once you're in, inside the black hole. Once inside of it, from Cooper's perspective, the rest of the universe outside is no longer behind him in space, but it's in the past. Once inside the black hole, it trying to go to the rest of the universe is kind of like me trying to go to my previous Monday, the last Monday. <laughs> it doesn't matter whichever direction I point and I blast my rockets, I will never be able to access that. I will never be able to go back to my Monday unless I know how to time travel which is beyond the scope of relativity, which says it can't happen because you'll have to travel faster than the speed of light and blah, blah, blah. We'll, we'll pretend that cannot happen. So if you agree that you cannot travel faster than the speed of light, you cannot travel back in time, this is not possible. And that's the reason why Cooper can never escape out of a black hole. <laughs> not because he's being sucked into it, but because he will now have to travel back in past. <laughs> this also means that his future now lies at the center of the black hole. Again, whichever direction he points his rocket and tries to blast off, just like how I cannot avoid the next Friday. <laughs> he cannot avoid the center of the black hole. But what do you find at the center of the black hole? Well, as you clo go close to the center of the black hole, the tidal forces will be extreme. Cooper will be ripped apart, unfortunately. Nothing will be able to survive that eventually. But at the center where you have infinite curvature, infinite tidal forces, we don't know what happens. So putting it all together, why can nothing escape a black hole? Well, we have two answers for it. From the outside perspective, nothing ever enters into the black hole in the first place. They're all frozen close to the event horizon, so the question becomes moot. But from the perspective of the falling person, they do cross the event horizon, and once they do, the rest of the universe now lies in their past, which means escaping requires them to travel back in time. They're completely disconnected from the outside timeline, and now their future lies at the singularity. But hey, that's just a theory, a general theory, eh. I have one last black hole joke, but it kind of sucks. Okay, I actually do have one last black hole joke. Why shouldn't you try hard to get out of a black hole? Because in the end, it doesn't even matter. And cut.